it is an honor to have all the way from Afghanistan by way of UAE now making his home with his whole family in Houston, Texas, the first Afghan national to be recognized in all American history by the U.S. Congress for his service for our country. Would you welcome Aziz? Thank you very much for your generous hospitality and welcoming Pastor Ron. It's an honor to be here. I really enjoyed the time. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak my testimony and my story to my brothers here since last day, uh, last evening to my brothers and sisters a few times. It's an honor. Thank you very much for everything. I have spoke about the uh, testimony and my stories, but uh, there is two things that I want to touch base that I, I didn't get a chance to speak it during my testimony. One, that when the capital was captured by the bad guys, do you realize how much I was scared? Like there are times in all of our lives that we get scared. I was, it's funny, you know, I'm standing over there, people are coming, shaking hands with me, taking pictures, and they think that how strong I am. I'm not strong. I'm same like you guys, I'm a you know, regular human being. And when there is time to be scared, I am scared, I was scared. But uh, thank to the Lord and my brother Chad, that reminded me who I was. This morning, that morning that when my daughter came out of the door outside, she came in, my younger daughter, she cried and told me, Daddy, there is Taliban in our street. She's crying. You cannot even imagine what was going on inside my soul my body, what was I experiencing, seeing this little child afraid of this barbaric regime, this group that my neighbors, that I send them the extra food over these ears from my house because I was thinking that they have no meal. They are a bunch of females and children and they are hungry. I was feeding them, but uh, that day, I realized that their males were all Taliban, and they came back and joined their family that morning. I had no idea that my neighbors were Taliban, so they know everything. And this caked in more fear, more anxiety, depression, anger, weakness. I was trying to move my legs. I couldn't move it. I thought about it. I have a Toyota Tundra in the garage, I have a Toyota Land Cruiser, all armored, but I don't have the ability to drive it. I have guns, but I don't have the physical capacity to use it. I called my brother-in-law, who is a taxi driver. I told him, you're coming in, and we will spend the time in your car until we get inside the airport. So Chad is in Abu Dhabi, and his team has arrived into Kabul airport, they are sending me these Google Maps directions to make it to the airport gate. And while using my brother-in-law's taxi, we squeezed in, you know, six children, my wife and myself and my brother-in-law were going to some point by the taxi, then we come off while my wife is, you know, wounded. She, she did an appendix operation, her appendix, uh, uh, you know, the, the wounds are all infected because of the low-quality me uh, medicines and uh, unqualified doctors over there, and she's crying. You know, the Taliban are shooting at me, and I don't care. I wrap up myself. I make it through this checkpoint, 
and I'm praying and trying to be connected with God and remembering Chad's words that what he told me. And once I pass this checkpoint, there is another checkpoint. The zero unit guys, they are shooting at me. They are not letting me. So somehow God helps us. We get in. Then we uh, get engaged with the U.S. Marines. Several attempts, night, day, in the middle of the night, early morning, no food, no water. We are trying, but we are not making it. We become disappointed, angry, you know, looking to my children, those of you who are parents, when you are in that situation. Imagine yourself in that situation. What will be going on inside you? It was a horrible time. It was a horrific time. And then there is this time in all of our uh, life, there is a time comes that you will finally uh, decide and quit. And you will say, I, I quit. I cannot do it anymore. And this was the time that when my wife cried and told me, hey, Aziz, I would rather die inside the taxi in a parking lot, but not under the feet of the, the people. <clears throat> because we saw children were shot at by the Taliban. Women were shot at, and they fell down on the ground, and the other people were just walking on them. Nobody cared about them. When my children saw that, they were crying, and their uh, uh, worriness became more and more. So this was the time that I called Chad. I told him, brother, I cannot make it. This is uh, very difficult. You know, I will uh, just go and try to use this taxi and probably go cross the border with the taxi uh, to uh, Tajikistan or Uzbekistan or one of the neighboring countries. Although I know on the road there is lots of checkpoints, but uh, I have no other choice because I see no progress getting into the airport. So Chad reminded me who I was, how strong I was, how much risk I was taking, and uh, he prayed over me, and he told me that he is asking the churches that he know to hold prayers for me. And uh, because of those prayers and because of reminding my past, I was able to finally make it. And because of his buddies coming out all the way to the, where the U.S. Marines are, we made it finally. Now, my wife and children are saved. I received a phone call from Abu Dhabi from one of Chad's teammates. He's like, Aziz, you're not coming alone. Go to the west side of the airport. I'm on the north side right now at that time. Uh, there is this girl. This is her picture. This is his GPS location. Find her and bring her as your daughter with your family because her family lives in Virginia, and she's by herself. She used to work for the American University of Afghanistan, and also she was a college student over there. She is injured badly. She has no money. They stole her wallet. She's hungry. She has no food. So now I came back, and think about it, how much fear and anxiety kicks in at that time, and how much I'm scared, but I'm remembering what my brother told me, and I'm being connected with the Lord because he says, I am with you, fear not. <clears throat> so I came back and my wife cried. She's like, where are you going now? I'm like, you guys just follow the line because there are thousands of people following the line to the uh, CBP building. And uh, I had to come out and uh, go, I'll drive, get another taxi and uh, drive another seven, eight kilometers, find this girl, bring her now again, same thing. Taliban shot at me, the zero units and the Marines. And then after several hours, I was able to get in by the help of Chad's team after calling him. And he made uh, several phone calls until the guys came out back and saved us. So uh, fear not, my brothers. I'm really proud of you guys that how much you guys care about each one, how much you guys love each one. America is America because of your sacrifices, because of your hard work, your hard leadership, and your management. Each one of you, 
since I came here that I see how much you guys have put into effort into this beautiful nation. I have learned a lot from you. I'm proud of you guys, and I love you guys. Thank you. After we made it to Abu Dhabi humanitarian city, now uh, because we are Afghans, uh, we are not vaccinated, there is this coronavirus ep epidemic going on, and the Arabs are really, uh, they have, you know, put lots of restrictions of masks, vaccines, and all these different things, regulations. They put us inside these room. Actually, the city that they call it the humanitarian city, at first, this was not the humanitarian city. That was made by the royal family for the coronavirus epidemic. They anticipated that if they have uh, patients from the uh, coronavirus epidemic, they will bring it into these different rooms. Like, it was made... You had your own separate room, kitchen, and you know, bathroom, and everything was separated. So uh, they kind of, uh, it was almost like a humanitarian prison. They put us inside there. There's TV, food comes behind the door, and we are locked in lockups. We are not even allowed to come to the main uh, walkway, the hallway. So we are all sitting over there and, you know, just waiting and waiting. They're like, okay, at first they said 16 days of quarantine. Then they extended it to one month. Then I called Chad and using Chad's name and his reputation and his, uh, my American uh, connections, I came outside. I told him I cannot live here. I need to go out because there is no clear instructions. Only the U.S. consulate is there and these thousands of uh, immigrants, while they are in these buildings, when the security comes, as soon as security opens the door to call a few people to bring them for the purpose of pro processing at U.S. consulate, then everyone is elbowing each other, pushing each other, the same exact thing like they did it at Kabul airport. And uh, we were trying to kind of have like a discipline and tell them to that you are not in Kabul airport anymore. You got to have patience, now you are in the safety. Let all the diplomats to do their work. So uh, I noticed that uh, they are not listening. Then I had, I had to walk in each building, knock each door. Like in each building there is three floors. In each floor there is more than 34, 36 rooms. In each room there is more than like six, seven, eight uh, people. You know Afghan families are bigger families. I knock on them and all these people come in the corridor and I talk to them, I told them, hey guys, I need you guys to be patient and listen to me. We need to create communication channels because U.S. consulate is here, the NGOs are here, the medical team is here. So for each team, we need people and we need to use it like by block numbers and by patience, by discipline. If we do like this, like, you know, barbaric system, they will not be able to do their job. And uh, I assigned them like uh, floor leaders, uh, building leaders, then in each cluster there are six buildings, floor leader reports to the building leader, building leader reports to the cluster leader, and cluster leader directly reports to me, and I reported to the U.S. consulate, the Afghan embassy, I invited the Afghan ambassador over there. Now most of these uh, Afghans that they are over there, because of the fear of the Taliban, they did not even have uh, their passports, IDs, or a marriage certificate, which is really needed for the formal process of uh, the, the visa to come here. And, uh, uh, you know, they give me this authorization. Uh, I made a stamp, and I made them, like, travel documents, marriage certificates, and for all these thousands of people. So uh, the, during the middle of the night, like, the medical team, when the medical team show up, they're like, hey, Aziz, we don't know where to start. If we show ourselves, all these guys are pushing themselves. Everyone wants to be first. No one is waiting or following or respecting the lines. So again, using all these team leaders, we were able to help all these thousands of people to process them in a manner uh, that, you know, help on one side the Afghans and help on one side the other officials to do their job. So why I'm telling this that there are challenges and risks coming in our life, there is several times that we as human beings will be faced 
with ups and downs. So the only thing that can help us at that time is our patience, our connection to our Lord, and being connected with him, being praying, and being strong, being a man will only help to overcome those challenges and those difficulties. And I'm really, really proud of you guys, as I mentioned it before, and I have learned a lot from Chad and from my other American colleague, colleagues. Since I came here, I'm learning from all you guys a lot. I learned from Pastor Ron. Thank you very much for letting me to be here with you since yesterday. I really appreciate it.